Rogaway here, coming back with another tutorial. And today we are looking at Adobe Animate, and we are talking about interactivity. And basically, um, when you are creating a game, or if you want to create an app, let's say, using uh, Adobe Animate, at some point you're probably going to need the user to interact with your animation or your creation in some way. And uh, in Adobe Animate, um, the way this is done is through ActionScript, a programming language called ActionScript. Today we're going to just look at some of the basics of action scripting, and uh, we'll get into some more complicated stuff later on. But uh, open up the file called Interactivity Start. Uh, there should be a link to the source file in the description. Um, so let's get started. Once you open that up, you're going to see that I've created a file here with a basically just a stickman character walking across the scene. Uh, the background moves as he does, and he just kind of gets to this point at where it stops. It says, which way should we go? Which way should we go? Yeah. Okay. And you'll notice that when we play that, when we test it, okay, so we're going to go control and test. He does his thing, and he keeps going, and he falls off a cliff, and it just keeps happening. What the heck is happening here? When I get to the end of my thing, I don't see anything with a cliff and him falling to his death. Well, this is something I want to show you guys um, on how you can keep your videos slash animations or interactives more organized. What's happening here is when it gets to the end of this sequence, it is jumping to another scene, okay? And in Animate, you can create as many scenes as you want, and they are controlled, or you can get to them up here, where you see this little director board. Um, if I click that and I go to Scene 2, oh, look at that. Now we have the part where he walks off and falls off the cliff and dies. Okay, so there's our second scene that it was going to. How can we tell it, though, to stop at the end where we're going to make a decision of where he should go? Well, that's where we have to get into some action scripting. And so when we want to build interactivity into our, um, you know, um, animations, we need to build in action script. And so the way we can do this is... On the very last frame, I made a layer here called Actions. And I always do that. I like to have a layer called Actions so that I can put my actions on it. I'm going to right click or control click on that layer and I'm going to choose Actions. And in here, I am going to put a action script. I'm going to just type this because I know it, but I'm going to show you an easier way of getting scripts in a second. Stop. Bracket, bracket, semicolon. Okay, so stop, bracket, bracket, semicolon. Okay, and I'm going to just close that. And now when we test our video, what should happen is it should stop when he has to make a choice. And that's exactly what happens. Okay? All right, so which way should we go? We now have a choice. Okay? Okay. And so what we should also do while we're at it is we should go to our scene two and put a stop at the part where he dies. So you'll see I got an action layer here too. I'm going to just put a stop on that one as well. Nice. Okay, so if we test this scene, okay, I'm just going to go test scene, it should stop there, nice, okay. Now, something that I should mention about this, it is very simple, I want to say it's probably the easiest type of game that you can create is a decision-based game. 
um, a game where people make choices and then it goes to a certain scene or a certain part of your video uh, based on those decisions. And what we're going to look at today here is how you can create a decision-based game. It's ba basically what we're doing. We're giving it two choices. Which way should we go? And we're going to have to input um, some sort of a response to tell it where we should go. Now, the first one is easy. Okay, We know that if they click the right arrow, we want it to go to scene two. Okay, Because scene two is where he continues to walk and he falls off the cliff. We already know that one. So, let's do that. We're going to click the button that I've put into this animation. And if you're not sure how to make buttons, go back to the tutorial on how to make buttons and, and make sure you know how to do that. I'm going to click this button. And now I'm going to go to Window Actions. Okay, so that was make sure the button is selected. Very important. Window Actions. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to tell it, okay, using this little option right here, Code Snippets. Kind of a funny name. Inside of Code Snippets, this should come up somewhere on your screen. We're going to go into Action Script, and you should see a bunch of pre made scripts. Okay, and I'm not going to go into necessarily what they do right now. Okay, they're kind of self explanatory. I'm not going to go into what the actual code is doing right now, but I'm going to just show you an example of one. So we're going to go to timeline navigation, and when people click this button, we want it to go to a scene and play. That's exactly what we want it to do. All right, we got all sorts of options here, but for this one, click to go to scene and play, which basically means when you click that button, it's going to jump to a different scene and it's going to start playing the animation, which is exactly what we want. So we're going to double click that. And what it'll do over on the right hand side in our actions palette, it's going to add a bunch of script to this. And this is what I'm saying. I don't want to, I'm not going to explain what this is doing right now, but it keeps it pretty straightforward. It's telling us in the instructions, replace scene three, which is down here, with the name of the scene that you would like to play. Replace one with the frame number that you'd like the movie to play from. Well, we want it to start with frame one. We want it to start at the start of the animation, but we want it to go to scene two. So we go in here, we put in scene two. Okay, so if you look at what we've got on this frame, we got a stop. They make the decision. If they click on the movie clip slash button, it's going to go to and play frame one of scene two. Does that make sense? I hope it does. We're going to close this. Everything is saved automatically. And let's test it. All right. He walks across. We got a decision to make. Click there. Continues on. And there we go. He's now died. Easy, very, very easy. Now, let's set up something for to happen when he clicks the up arrow. All right, actually, before that, before that, uh, let's jump to scene two. Let's go to the end. And let's say we want to be able to go back and try again. So what we can do is, in the library, I've already created a button for this. I thought I did. Arrow, oh yeah, here. Symbol 1 is a restart button. Okay, I'm going to drag that in. Uh, I don't want it on the actions layer. I'm going to put it on this layer 5 because it's empty. We're going to bring in this restart button. I'm going to put it under you died. Okay. We've got this button in here that appears at the end of the animation, okay? So you don't see it until you died comes up. Well, guess what, guys? We need to, let's just test this scene. We need to tell it what to do with that button, just like we did with the arrow. Okay, so you can probably already predict what, we, what we're going to do. We're going to click it, 
Okay, we're going to select it. We're going to go to Window, Actions. We're going to open up our code snippets again. We're going to tell it, Timeline Navigation, we're going to say Go to Scene and Play once again. Okay, if it gives you this error, it's saying it wants an instance name. I should have explained that, but just hit OK. This one, we are going to tell it to go to frame, uh, sorry, scene one and play from frame one. So it stops on this frame. It's listening to see if we are going to click it. If we click it, it goes back to scene one and plays. Okay, now let's test that out and see if it actually works. We're going to go back to scene one and I'm going to go test. He walks along, we click here, he continues along, falls off the cliff, restart button now, click, and it goes back to the beginning and we can make a choice again. Okay? If you make a very complicated game, you should always have a restart button so that people don't have to reload the game or, or whatever over and over again. There should always be a reset button. Let's say they go up. And we just want it to go to a very simple page that says you've won the game. So here's what we're going to do first. We don't have that built yet. We only have two scenes, one and two. So let's say we want to create a new scene. We're going to go insert scene. And now we start with a whole new, brand new scene. I'm going to go to the text tool. And on here, I'm just going to write, you've won the game, exclamation marks. Okay, maybe I'm going to edit that text a bit because it looks so bad. Um, okay, it's still pretty bad. You've won the game. Okay, and that's all that there is on this scene scene five okay you've won the game well let's go back to scene one oops let's go to this top arrow and let's tell this top arrow to go to scene five so we're going to go to window actions code snippets once again by the way if you know coding then you don't have to use code snippets it's just at this level, uh, this is the easier way to do it. We're going to tell it if they click this arrow, it's going to go to scene five. Okay, so the up arrow is going to scene five, and here we can see the right arrow is going to scene two, and there's a stop on this layer. So everything is going to work fantastic. I'm going to leave code snippets open so I don't have to keep reopening it. Control test. Let's do the right arrow just to make sure it's still working. Restart. We died. Up arrow. What the heck happened? It didn't work. Can anybody predict why it didn't work? Well, let me show you. When we go to scene five, we did not put a stop on the scene. Therefore, it played this frame so fast we didn't see, and it just jumped to the next scene. You always need to remember to put a stop on your scenes if you, do, if you want people to be able to see it. Okay? So now let's test it. Let's go back to scene one. You don't have to do that, but I like to. Test it again. Up arrow. You won the game. There we go. It stops there now. Okay. Again, we should add a reset button to this frame in case anybody actually wants to play this horrible game over again. Let's just use the same one. Same idea. Can click it, select it, actions, code snippets. Let's just tell it to go to scene one again when somebody clicks it here in this case. Just like that. Okay? We now have, yes, it is very simple. It is a super simple animation, but it works 
it's got a decision that we have to make. We've died in this case. We've won in that, that case. You can go and make this as complicated as you want. Okay, even though this example is super simple, you can make this as complicated as you want with just these very simple action scripts that will allow you to control the navigation based on user input. All right, hopefully you found that useful. Okay, we did a few new things there with the scenes and with the buttons and uh, with the uh, simple action script that we've been using here. We're going to make this more advanced in the future. Hopefully you found that useful. Thanks for watching. I hope to see you include some interactivity in your own projects.